Hey guys, Chris here. By 2025, the sale of non-EVs will be banned in Norway. In the UK, that number is 2030, along with a lot of European countries. And in California, that number is 2035. So in not that many years, the majority of people buying EVs won't have access to a home charger. Since most people owning a vehicle you know, street park, just like me with my Audi e-tron right behind me. I bought this back in September of last year. And ever since I have been parked in the street outside of where I live without access to a home charger. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys what it has been to drive this car more than 13,000 kilometers in the past five months without access to a home charger. I'm gonna tell you guys what is bad about it <laughs> and what's even worse. And, but at the end of the video, Hopefully there is some light at the end of the tunnel because owning an EV without access to a home charger may not be as bad as you initially thought it was. Today's video is sponsored by the subscribe button down below and also the like button. We're really trying to hit that 20,000 subscriber mark before the month is over, before February 1st, because if we manage that, I'm going to do something crazy or insane or something you guys just want to see me doing. People have suggested ice bathing, driving to the North Pole or the Polar Circle or maybe Nude Cup, or I could drive to the North Pole. You know, Top Gear did it. Why can't I do it in an e -tron? That would be cool. But yeah, go to my previous video, the Norwegian high speed run in the Volvo XC40 and comment there what you want me to do. And the comment that gets the most, most upvotes, I'm gonna make a video of when we hit that 20,000 subscriber mark at the end of the month. And as much as 85% of you guys are watching aren't subscribed, so I know if you, everybody just hits that subscribe button and that like button, we will be at 20,000 subscribers in no time at all because in the past five days, we have gained something like 700 subscribers, which is crazy. I'm just mind blown. So thank you very much. It really does motivate me to making more content and as good content as possible. So hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and also that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Just to give you guys some context, I don't live in the middle of Oslo. I live about 14 kilometers in a suburb-ish, you know, type of area that is built in the 50s and 60s. And as you can see here, all these people live in these uh, semi-detached houses, which is very n a normal living situation here in this part of the city. And look at all these people. All these people are street parks. So all these houses on the right side, on the left side, all have street parking. So, you know, this isn't just a problem that is or will be unique for people living in the middle of the city. This will affect a lot of people. And, you know, as I said, the majority of people who drive a car, you know, especially in Europe, do par street park. Prior to the global pandemic, I used to take the metro to work. So that's the whole reason I live, you know, 14 kilometers outside of the city. It's, it's not a long commute at all. It's because of the access to the metro. This takes me to downtown Oslo in about 15 minutes. So I would take it to work every day and back from work every day of the week. So on a daily basis, I seldom use my car to work so not having a home charger actually didn't affect you know my daily work routine at all right after the pandemic hit and before the whole world went home officing i would actually just drive to oslo and park here and charge at one of these public charging stations here in downtown oslo i think they have about 12 or 14 charging points here and my office is about a six or seven minute walk that way so you know from the metro station i spent the same amount of time these chargers here aren't the quickest but topping up with three kilowatts of charging speed being at the office all day meant i would actually be in the net 
at the end of the week. So I wouldn't be losing any charge at all. So me not being able to top up at home wouldn't affect me at all actually. But even if I didn't have access to these chargers, it's 14 kilometers from my home to my work and 14 kilometers back again. That's 28 kilometers round trip. And if we just add another 10 kilometers just for the sake of it, that's 38 kilometers. That means in the summertime, I can go nine days without charging. And even in the winter, when it is at its coldest, I can still go six or seven days without having to top up. In my opinion, something that has made owning an EV without having a home charger so much easier is the fact that there are chargers at shopping centers, grocery stores, supermarket and other shopping points. I'm now at a shopping mall not far from where I live where I usually like to shop maybe once a week, twice a week, you know on a Wednesday or a Friday or a Saturday. Maybe I go here eating and here they have 50 kilowatt chargers which just make it so easy. So I can you know come here with basically an empty battery and then I can shop for two hours three hours and then be fully charged when I leave here. So these chargers at shopping points really have changed the way I think about charging and yeah, it just makes life super easy. If you're going on a long trip or need to top up quickly, you can connect to something called an HPC or a lightning charger. Usually they are chargers that can deliver 100 kilowatts or faster charging speed, but your car also has to support that charging speed for it to make sense. So this charger here can deliver 150 kilowatts, which is quite a common charging speed for these HPC chargers and connected to my e-tron, which can also take a maximum charging speed of 150 kilowatts. You can see we're charging there at 136, but it is minus three and a half degrees outside, meaning we won't get that maximum charging speed because the cold weather does affect charging speed but this does have you know super battery management meaning that we will get close to that charging speed but as I said your car has to support the charger or else it doesn't make any sense and also using an HPC charger for topping up or on long trips is something you're going to do even if you have home charging because your car can only go as far as it can on one charge and then you'll have to top up preferably as quickly as possible so that's the same if you have home charging or if you don't have home charging but if you don't have home charging you have to consider that you can't start with 100% because if you have a home charger you can top up to well the percentage you want to but when you don't have a home charger you will arrive at the charger like this and then you have to top up and then you can leave so that's time you have to consider when traveling So what does all this charging out cost? Because it most definitely isn't free. No, not even close. So I'm gonna go through the charging I've shown you today and then I'm gonna break down the pricing. And we're using my Audi e-tron and the consumption and the range it gets as you know reference. So starting off with street parking and charging in downtown Oslo and if you don't have an EV parking in downtown Oslo is super expensive and will cost you somewhere between 80 and 120 kroners per hour. That is insane guys. So if you park an EV and charge it, it will cost you 15 kroners per hour during the most expensive peak times. That's weekdays between eight in the morning and nine in the evening. So if you park for eight hours, that will cost you 120 kroners. And will, you will be delivered about 25.6 kilowatt hours if you're at the charger that delivers 3.2 kilowatts of charging speed. That will give about 100 kilometers of range in the e-tron and that breaks down to about 1.2 kroners per kilometer included parking. So for reference, we're gonna use something like a Volvo XC90 diesel, which is a car I have owned in the past. That uses 
around one liter per 100 kilometers. And with diesel prices at 14 kroners per liter, that runs to 1.4 kroners per liter. So the Audi e-tron with parking in downtown Oslo is actually cheaper than just running an XC90 diesel. But where it gets interesting is when we go to the fast charger. So we're starting off with the med charger at the shopping mall, which will run you 3.2 kroners per kilowatt hour and also 1.25 kroners per minute. So if we charge 50 kilowatt hours, that runs to 160 kroners and it will take about 60 minutes to get that at a 50 kilowatt charger. So that's another 60 kroners. The sum is 220 kroners and you get about 200 kilometers of range with that 50 kilowatt hours. This is summertime and that runs to about 1.1 kroners per kilometer. Moving over to the rapid charger, the Fortum charger we charged at, uh, that will be cheaper. That will cost you two kroners and 50 euro per kilowatt hour and two kroners per minute. So actually more expensive per minute, but you are charging faster. So that breaks down to 125 kroner for the juice delivered and 50 kroners for the time. So actually cheaper because you are charging faster. That will take you about 25 minutes. So the total sum is 175 kroners and that breaks down to 0.875 kroners per kilometer. But the cheapest charging you can do with an Audi e-tron is at an Ionity charger because when you buy an Audi e-tron, you are delivered an, an Ionity card where you have the first year without membership fee. The membership fee is usually 200 kroners per month, but you don't have a membership free. And then you're charging at one kroners and 85 euro per kilowatt hour and zero kroners per minute. So that 50 kilowatt hours will cost you 92.5 kroners. And yeah, that breaks down to a kilometer price of 0.46, which is one third or under one third than what it costs to run an XC90 diesel. So it's not cheap, it's not free, but it's much cheaper than running something like an XC90. Fortunately, more and more living and apartment complexes like this are building out chargers. This is a 102 unit complex and they have just built out 20 of the 7.2 kilowatt chargers. And that means you can charge something like an Audi e-tron from 10 to 90% in just 11 hours. That is overnight. So that is super, super awesome. More and more chargers are being built every day. Slow chargers, medium speed chargers, fast chargers, and rapid chargers are all being built in the numbers. And this means that access to charging, no matter what speed, will only become better and better and better implemented into the real world and real life. And us as EV users, us as human beings and consumers will only be adapting more and more to the EV scene. I've only had my EV since September last year and already the way I, you know, do chores, the way I think about traveling, the way I plan is just a little different. And in some regards, I find it easier because I don't have to find a gas station to fill up. I do my filling while I'm doing other things. But of course, other times, well, it is a bit more of a chore and a bit more stressful. So guys, I hope you liked my experience. I hope my experience will help you with unanswered questions and maybe, you know, be the reason you do choose or not choose an EV or why you want to wait five or 10 years for getting into the EV scene. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always guys, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.